Right then, we're going to have more hot air than normal in this video because we are fitting the compressor. See what I did there, Tyler? Right, so we have already done the unboxing video and I will put the link there. Honestly, or oh, there's a free beanie hat to the person that spots I haven't put the link. Right, um, so we've done that and where's it going to go and what's it for? So compressor is good if you are going off-road because you will want to reduce the air pressure in your tyres um, so that the tyres are softer, got more contact with the ground and all that stuff. So that's but then obviously you want to pump them back up so you can drive home. Because the cool thing about the Defender is you can take it in a crazy off-road field. And I'll put a picture of us doing crazy off-road field stuff. But then you can drive it home on the motorway, go to the shopping centre, have your DAB radio and your aircon going. And it's brilliant. It is so versatile. But the compressor will allow us to do that. Because the last time we went off-road, we couldn't get up the steps. But now we're all opening up again now here in the UK at least, we are gonna try and get off-road again. We can, we've got our new off-road wheels and tires, but right, it's the compressor. So where does the compressor go, or why do we want it? So a lot of people wrote on my unboxing video, um, a lot of people tow caravans or tow stuff for a living, and they, they bought a Defender to use it to tow stuff. And they're saying it's really good, because if you're picking up a caravan or a trailer, you can not only check the pressures are right on your car, you can also do it on the caravan. And the other brilliant thing is, and we'll do this at the end of the video, is you can set the pressure you want and just walk around each tire and set it. So it's a lot quicker and brilliant. Right, so here we go. So it is gonna live, it is gonna live, I'm in the way of the light toilet. It's gonna live here. So this little cutout, now unfortunately it's not as easy as just getting a sort of multi-cutting tool and cutting it out and finding it. We have to take this whole panel off and we've done the video for that and i will put it there um but this panel you've got to take this all off and it goes all the way down here we'll have a look and you've got one plug this and you've got to disconnect that and there's a hidden screw behind here and so i'm not going to video that again now when we did it we 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 actually split the panel because the two panels were joined here with plastic rivets so we took the opportunity so that we don't have to take all that bit off again, we have created some rib nut joints there. So when you see it later, don't say, hey Simon, you didn't take your whole panel off, mate. That's why we did that. Right, so we're gonna get behind here. We're gonna have a look. We're gonna follow the online instructions. Tyler's got them up on the laptop. So these are the genuine instructions. They are available. I will put the link in the description to the genuine instructions. Fuck that, why does it do that, Tyler? The mu look, you were, your time had just come and you power down. Right then, so we will do that. Um, right, first of all, right, let's get this panel out and let's have a look what's behind there and start making sense of the instructions. Right, you join us, we've got everything unpacked neatly and we are comparing it to, so this is A, A is the compressor, we're happy with A, B is the metal plate, totally put in the wrong plate. Oh, no. B is the metal, that's rubbish, B. Um, C is the wire, this loom. We'll have a look at this loom. We'll take a pause from checking. Right, this loom is quite interesting. Actually, this is they've actually given you two connectors here. And what we've got to do is we've got to disconnect the old loom in the car, which is why we've got to disconnect the battery. And we'll get to that step in a second. But basically, the power is going to come in here. Now, if you notice, we've got the brown and the black. The black is earth, I believe, and the brown is power. That's right, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah. Now, normally that, that would go to the cigarette lighter or the auxiliary power outlet, whatever you want to call it. But if you notice, there is no, the black wire's there, but we've got a red wire. So the brown wire goes all the way in to the, to the control module, which is mounted on the back of here. Okay, that plugs into the back of there. And I think what happens is when the compressor's in use, it doesn't give any power out to the power outlet. So it doesn't want you using the compressor and the power outlet together because you could overload and blow a fuse, which is interesting because some guy has written to me and said his fuse is blowing when he uses his compressor. We will look at that later. But Land Rover told him, well, don't use your power outlet at the same time. But I, think you, I don't think you can use your power outlet and we will check it at the end. Um, we will see whether when the compressor is in use, does it disable the power outlet? 
because that would be clever because basically Tyler pointed out so all we're actually connecting to here this would just literally get in a power on earth in here that is an output to the, the power outlet so you could mount this anywhere in the car it would be relatively easy um, because because all you've got is a uh, if you just connected the brown and the black you would have the power you need and it mounts on a fairly flat plate so we were looking at other ways if if this video is way too complex or you don't want your compressor in the left if you want it on your mole plate I'm not suggesting more more no more molly plate um, but you could mount it somewhere else if you were building a custom expedition vehicle you could buy one of these and not necessarily mount it in that location right we digress Tyler we're waffling right a b c where are we up to now d is the cover which has got the control box inside of it we'll get to that later right and then it all gets a bit complicated because I'm going to go completely out of numerical sequence this is the bottom bracket this is interesting so this will fit onto the bottom of here like so and this has got a little rubber grommet in it and it sits on a peg so so that it all bolts up but the bottom location is just resting on that rubber foot this you only need if you're one of these people that's missing 20 inches isn't that right Tyler like that. yeah because you've only got 90 inches not the 110 I've got so that you don't need that if you've got a 110 so then you have some washers and we'll have a bit of fun with the Land Rover instructions in a minute. These rubbers L, which we have six of, these are rubber spongy washers. These washers are thick M6 washers. These spacers G are little cylindrical spacers as you can see. These K are some little two M6 bolts. Now this was weird. This is weird. <laughs> there's F, there's three F M6 flange nuts and there's five M6 flange nuts. Look at Land Rover's instructions. Why do they do this? So look, F, M6 times 3, H, M6 times 5. I like the way they scaled them. I like the way this one looks smaller when it's this. Why didn't they just say 8? I've spent ages. I've been trying to work out which three are different than the other five. A, a three lock nuts and no, they're all the same. So you will have 3 and 5, which is really 8, right? And then... We have got J, which are just, and we've got seven of those. So these are a thinner washer than those. But all the fittings are M6. Right, and then we've got the plate, and then we've got the bag of goodies. Right, let's have a look in here, Tyler. You dive in there. Right, so what we've got, I'll just run you through the basic story of what we've got to do. Then, you, then you'll have the gist, and you don't need to watch me waffling. The wiring loom is going to go up behind here so that we've got the compressor connections at the top and this is where we've removed the power outlet when we took the panel and that is where we're going to take our power from we are going to remove this connector housing and we are going to reinsert it into the others so that's why you must disconnect your battery because you will have a live earth and power like sort of ready to like that right so there we go this plate is then once we've got the wire this plate is then going to sit over, I'm doubting myself, 180 tiles. Right, there we go. And that is going to mount on that top mount there. That is going to mount there at all. You can see that's all going to line up there. And that's going to form the mounting for the compressor. And we're going to whoop that on. And that is all there is to it. It doesn't sound too bad. So let me make a start. Are you all right lying there, yeah. Tyler? Right, so... We are going to loosen this one here, this one here, and we have, have we pre-loosened these a bit? Yeah. So these are 10 millimeter socket, right, Tyler? Yeah. Um, we, can, no, we don't need to take these off, do we? We don't necessarily need to take it off. Let's see if we can do it without taking it off. Although, aren't we going to have to, doesn't it mount onto these two eventually, Tyler? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. So let's, let's have them off. We've got to take those two But off. we need to reuse them, so don't paint them orange, then you won't lose yeah. them. Oh, look at that. We don't take these on. Uh, <laughs> it's not us. It's not us, no. The main dealers, they, they won't be happy, will they, Tyler? Right. Mm. Now, interestingly, again, Land Rover, you may want to correct your instructions. I'll put it up. But Land Rover show that this bit is slotted, that these two are slotted, and that these two are holes. Now, either mine's ahead or behind the game. I don't know. But we've got these side 
sides of slots and these two as holes, but it doesn't matter, does it? We're just... We might be we're, on the 90s. Yeah, we're just picking holes, aren't we, Tyler? We do. We like a bit of... We challenge authority, don't we, Tyler? Anti-establishment. <laughs> go. There we go. In the 70s and 80s, they had the punk movement. Now they've got me and Tyler. K movement, anti-establishment. Well, right then. We are an establishment. Yes. Right then. So can we wiggle? Oh, I think I'm going to take them all off, Tyler. I'm, you see? I'm just going for it now. I'm just... What's the... Caution to the wind, Tyler. Obviously, yeah, you don't really want to go disconnecting all the... So this is your amplifier, by the way. This is what turns my humble defender into a sonic cathedral of sound. Maybe one day we will upgrade. Upgrade, right, so can I? All right, I've got to get that off there. This is where the absolute 80s comes from. Right then, so there we go. So what, what connections we got on there, Toy? So we must have speakers, power. That looks like the power bad boys, doesn't it? Look, I've got fatter cables going there, I reckon, than I've got there, look. They'd have been better off taking it out the amp, but, but then you couldn't... But then you wouldn't better use your amplifier as you were blowing up your tyres. As it is now, you see, I can enjoy absolute 80s while inflating my tyres. Right, so we've got that out of the way. Let me go and grab the cable. Right, so this is where we now need to get. This cable needs to come out the top. And we've got a cable tie it to this loom. Now, they didn't say remove this necessarily, but I am going to say, right, well, so we're going to cable tie that there. And what we've got to do is we've got to remove this connector here and put the pins in here right so we've got to make sure we get and we've got to make sure that the black wire goes through to the black and the yellow wire goes through to the purpley brown one there so Tyler's colored that in black for me so the one that so I can now what I'm thinking I'm going off piece now I'm thinking well we've got all this out the way let's unpin this connector so Tyler who's got eyes that work is going to dexterously show us how to prod that and remove these two wires. So if we disconnect the battery, Tyler. Yeah, I've done that. You've done that. So to disconnect your battery, if you don't know, oh, I'm going to lose a lot of beanie hats here. We'll put the link to the how to how to disconnect the um, battery there. But basically, it's under your seat. Right, so Tyler's done that. Right, we're out the car. We're using this new tape. We found this in a skip, didn't we, Tyler? That's our flash we are. But it's the right height for Tyler. And look, we've got it under the light. Right, anyway, they're not interested, Tyler. They just want to... Right, so this is the same connector as in the car. So Tyler's going to demonstrate it now. All right, so there's a little insert. Hold on, Tyler, let me zoom the camera a bit. Oh, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're right, we're zoomed in now. So you can remove that little reddy brown bit. Okay, so that's the little bit he's, he's removed and we'll, all right. Now, what you've got is you've got little plastic, hold it up a little bit, Tyler. Right, you've got little plastic um, springs, um, right, little plastic springs that point from the, that they're springing towards the outside and they stop the pins coming back. So what Tyler's gonna do, he's gonna get in, sort of in between the pin and the plastic thing and then lever this way, which will force the plastic spring towards the middle and then he'll pull on the wire and it should come out. So there you go, that's my explanation. Go for it, Tyler. Right. Now, the there you go, got, he's got it, gone then. And then you can, once you've got, got that released, you can pull the blade out. Now, this little bit here, the new connector on the loom didn't come with this. So when you take it out of the one on the car, because you're going to throw the connector body on the car away, um, to fit the new silver one. Make sure you keep hold of that and then I would put it in the end of this one. I don't know why they've missed that out. Right, let's go Tyler. So let's go and do it in the car. And as it was the same. So we're now back in the car, on the loom. Right, so Tyler's gonna do it all again. So he's gonna pull that red, pull that red bit out the middle. Just lever that out. Good. Right, then he's gonna get his little, he's, he's just using a very thin, they're actually special connector withdrawal tool. Um, but it's actually just a very thin, you could use a very thin screwdriver or something. Or you could use a flathead. It's flathead, it's, it's but it's like a watchmaker's screwdriver. It's a so he's pushing them there. That should be my live one. Mm. Just to disconnect your battery. Okay, so then 
Yeah, there you go, well done. So that's that removed. So that we do not need anymore. And there's your silver one, if, silver gray. So you've got to work out which way that goes because it's got to have the catches to have a try. Now you'll know which way it goes because it'll, A, it'll look right when you look in the end and it will also catch. We can't quite. Is that caught? Tyler was saying earlier off the camera, he said it'd be a lot easier just to cut them and solder them, which is, um, but you can't do that because they don't give you a, a connector with, with pigtails on it. Right, we've done that and we've checked it all plugged in, and we're, but we're not too happy. Put your other hand behind it, Tyler. It was, you, you, at, the, at the end there, you can see the, there is bits of the crimp exposed. Right, okay. So if you have the, the back of the crimp metal exposed out the back of your connector, you've done it wrong as we just have, but we make the mistake so you don't have to. So we have now got it in the correct way. So we are gonna try, if I zoom now, right Tyler, if you can keep it still there and show what we've got to do. So the first thing you have to do actually is pull the orange. There's a little orange bit at the front of there that you need to pull out. Not fully, just sticking out. So if I can just have a look at it side on, that's it there. You can see that's sticking out. Um, and I'll try and take some pictures and insert them. And then what you can do is you can then insert the cable. So if you do that so we can see, and it's the, is it the copper crimp away from you, isn't it? So you yep. can't see the copper. You just see the flat back side of the crimp, not the coppery side, right? So there you go. So then insert that, Tyler. Right, and notice we've got the tab on the connector body facing towards us, right? And now that will then go in into such a way that there is no exposed metal at the, at the back there. And then if you've got it in the right way, you can then push the orange connector in. So you will know when you've got it right because your orange connector will go in and you will have no exposed metal at the rear. So now we have the new gray connector on the end of the car loom, we can now plug in this new loom. Right, okay. Now, that one will then go off to the auxiliary power socket on our rear panel, and we've got to route this up here. Now, I'm gonna go around here. Now, I don't know how long this cable's got to be, but we, we reckon we need more at the top than at the bottom, don't we, Tyler? Right, so obviously, yeah. So the, the, the the loom is good. It's got it's got a protective conduit on the outside. So there we go. So we can move that if we're wrong, and we'll we'll trim that. But let's let's see if that works, shall we, Tyler? So right, I am correct now. We can put this on, can't we? Yeah. Now that's got to come out the top of there, and I think it does come out the right. I've got to be careful that bottom bit. Right. Right. Yep, so we shouldn't be, so we just want to, yeah, I mean, that's, that's we, we seem to have plenty there, and that, that should have enough there, shouldn't it, Tyler? Yeah. yeah, that looks right, so yeah, I think, yeah, exactly like Tyler said, so if you get it so that you're, you've got this little rubbery, sort of grommety thing here, if you have it as a continuation of that line, I think we're going to be in good order, right, we'll continue with this, we've then got to fit this bracket on, um, let me get the top at the right bit again, yeah, so, and then we can put these beautiful orange nuts back on, Tyler. One, two. Now, I'm not going to do those tight now. And then, so the, we're going we're gonna to need one of the, the nuts, I think, is going to go through through this top hole here. He's a little bit out, look, but we can, we can maneuver him. And then we need the bottom bracket. Right, so now we need to fit the bottom bracket, which is this one with the two pegs on, um, bracket M, and then we need um, two H's. Careful you don't take those F's, Tyler. <laughs> right, did. nearly did. Right then, okay. And then we should better get that bottom bracket on. So the bottom bracket is gonna go over that, over that rubber peg there. So, so can you see this little stud here, which is, looks like the end of a rib nut? And then we can get, make sure that rubber grommet, there we go, the rubber grommet's over. 
and then and then we're ready to tighten that up right. so let's just show you. now if you are doing it on the 90 you will have to read the instructions and look at your car because there's some other complexity about bits up here that you've got to go and you've got to fit that top bracket but we 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 aren't worried about the 90 you're on your own boys right then Litlands, yeah just boys amongst men and they tire right then so we've got the bottom bracket on if i could use a computer it would help right so then we've got to do this top one so we need a k a j and a h to line all that up so actually which way did they show it going through from the back one that time yeah. right then. i don't expect it makes a lot of difference there you go He's, I wonder if it would have been neater the other way. Right, so that is our bracket all fully installed now. So we can now it does give us the torque setting, doesn't it? I think it was 10 newton meters. Yeah. We'll put it on the screen now. That's that. Yeah, newton, oh yeah now. Right, and maybe we, we, there we go, and make sure we get these, the amplifier brackets on there, because those two you'll miss. Not if they're on. That's that, and then these last two ones here. Now, in fact, I think I've done those in the wrong order. I think you should, when you've got a slotted hole, you should do these first and let the slots ride. Otherwise, we'll be stressing. We don't want to be stressing. Right, yeah, and then when they're done, get those slotted ones. 10 new meters, 9, 10, there you go. Obviously, be careful of those wires there. Don't be stressing those too much. Right, so I think we're ready now to get the main. So let's have a check of the instructions now. Right, we are now ready to do the nasty bit. We are now drilling. Now, Tyler did say, well, we could just cut it all out. But I don't think that's quite the way it was intended. So they've given you those complicated dimensions. But Julian has rustled up in no time a template that should give us the locations. Now, these aren't the size of the holes. We've got a 22, 22, 22, and the big bad boy 38 at the top to get that big connector through. Okay, so we've just put the template so it goes on the sort of inner edge there and the inner edge there. And we'll get the infamous orange pen out. Uh, have a look at where this looks like. Right, that should. Give us four holes. That one's still close to that edge, but we'll have a look. I think it right. is anyway. I think it is, right. But these holes are way bigger than it needs because we're drilling a 22 millimeter hole to get that six millimeter stud through. So we got plenty of wiggle room, we're not worried. But, right, we have a bit of wood under the table, don't we, yet? Yeah, let's just check we're there. In there. Yep. And then we need the bigger drill for the connector mm -hmm. hole. And oh, then we're ready to put all that in. Mm -hmm. We've got the slow speed for that big drill, don't we? Put it on speed yeah. one for that one. Ooh. There we go. We will clean all that up. In fact, they're not too bad at all. They yeah, come off all right, but clean all, the, clean all the fluff off them. But make sure, so right, let me just show you one little quick thing here. Right there. So one thing, get this connector, you've got to get it through both. So that, oh, make sure that rubber grommet doesn't come out. There we go, so that's to stop it chaffing the cable. We've got all these holes protruding here. So I'll get Tyler now to put all the interior back together and then we'll come and see you and we'll see how central those holes are. We'll get it bolted up and plugged in and we're nearly, we're nearly there. Right, one other thing we've got to watch as we're putting the main panel back in is 
we've got to reconnect that auxiliary power connector. What other connectors go back on there, Tyler? There's that one. Um, you'll have a light. Or yeah, the light, but we can fish that in through afterwards, can't we? And the switches. And the switches. So yeah. Connected, but I managed to pull it all out. Right. So just make sure you get those. But this is the one we're watching because this is that new cable we've put on, and we've got to make sure we've got enough length on that cable so we'll just check that out now right let's have a look inside so that template has worked a treat we have got the studs all coming out roughly in the middle of where we need we've got the connector coming out already where we need it at the top so it's time now to put it on so let me get right we need we need gls we need three g's which is those big spacers followed by three l's which are the rubber washers and so we'll see what's happening here. Eh? Well, so we're doing a little, little pantomime. All right, so, and, and they should go through the plastic trim so that the, all the force is being taken by the metal bracket because we don't want to clamp it on this because this will just bow and crack, right? And then you've got the rubber washers go on top and there's going to be another rubber washer on the other side. So it's going to have a semi-rubberized mount to it. And I guess that's when it starts going, Wah! it doesn't sort of shake the whole car. It's got a sort of isolating mount. Right, then let me grab. Right, now we've been a bit naughty because we've been playing and we've got the battery connected. So we probably shouldn't have, but we'll, let's, see, let's see what it, it does. Right, so there's nothing. So that gets connected into the control module. Let's have a look at this. This is going to mount. Oh, it's not those slots. Is it? It's those holes there, it's those round holes. Now they're a bit oversized, and I think what we've got to do in a minute is get it all, uh, and we've got to get that connector through and that one out the way. So let's get this right, shall we? All right, there we go. So we've got the connector coming through. It's all looking neat though, isn't it? Oh. Right, then we need an F, an I, and an L. So let me get it. An F. Mm. Right, so I'll do the I'll do one of the top ones first. So the rubber, we got a rubber washer on first. So that's so now we can see what the rubber each side of that bracket, and then you've got one of these fairly thick washers. He's obviously going, and then we've got one of our bolts. I think these refs <laughs> don't get mixed up with the others. Right, there you go. And then I think it says do them up. But don't do them too tight because we've got to centralise it so that the cover lines up. So I'll get those, all those FILs put on those others. Right, we've just got to connect all these wires. So we have got two big plugs and a little plug. So the little plug goes in here. So let me try and get that little plug in first. This might be a bit of a challenge, Tyler. Might be a bit of a... I don't know. You might be able to get a bit. There you go. You've got a bit more visibility there. There's me hiding it all from you, Tyler. Now look at that. Right then, here we go. I guess this is the this is the killer killer one, isn't it? Whether we got enough length on that one. Yeah. Ooh. Did I did my interior lights flicker there? Right. So there's the um. There's the air outlet, we've got that there. And we've got these spring clips. So can you see these metal spring clips here, Tyler? Yeah. How many have we got? One, two, three. They're gonna go into these little slots if you slide around here, Tyler. They're gonna go into these little slots on the metal cage. So let's have a look. There you go, wait, there he is, there he is. Look, once you find the hole, I think yeah. You're in. You're in. Oh. And there, on, peel, it. peel it. But I think that's probably enough for the day. I think we have to finish this tomorrow now, aren't we, Tyler? It's installed. It's installed, right. So we will join you tomorrow. It's going home time. Gosh. Right, welcome back. Tyler's put all the car back together again. We've been home, we've come back to work. Right, so there it is. It's all installed beautifully. And we've had a little bit of a play with it and we have half mastered it out. So we will do a separate video. I can't put the link to it because I haven't done it yet on how to use it because it's not complicated but there's some weird pressing and holding and pressing quickly it's a bit sort of yeah I know. so this video we're going to finish it off now with a few bits and pieces so we are going to show you where i've written a list of what we're going to we're going to show you 
power and stuff and all that we're going to do that right so what one thing is interesting so have a look at that there well i'm and you will notice this is the auxiliary power socket we have underneath now you will notice that we have a light on here now if you are having problems with this the first thing to check is do you have power to this auxiliary socket now this is key because it's really clever i suspected it when i saw the loom because i'm clever not really but right and what it does is when you turn this on there's a relay inside here and when this activates it turns because the power to this is actually controlled from here it turns this off so we'll see that later right now the other problem is you will notice we do not have the car on we do not have the ignition on we have this auxiliary power is here so i can turn it on if i want but any minute now the car is going to turn off the power now it's quite interesting it doesn't seem to i thought it might be linked to the interior lights or something but it's not but it has its own delay has it gone off look at that as we talk it's gone off now so by having this in here i can tell when there's no power getting to this unit and we notice one trick you can sort of wake it up by just opening the door Do -do! right so we have woken him up now you only get away with that trick for, a, for like 10 minutes after you've had the ignition on. So, right, you can use it without the ignition on, as I'm demonstrating. Right, let's get, let's get, let's get to, so let's do, do the basic turning on, just the basic. So, so it's here, we can see we have power to it. If we press this, it will turn on. Now, we haven't got the hose connected to it yet. So the hose connects onto here, but quick press will turn it on and it's set to 35.5 psi okay and it'll do um and it'll sit there so we can see but notice look it's turned off the power here this power light on this power socket has turned off if tyler turns and let me show you how to turn it off so if i press and hold there'll be a series of bars then we need to count six bars that's right isn't it yeah. tyler so here we go press and hold so press one bar two bar three bar four bar five bar six bar let go and that's turned it off and you will notice now your auxiliary socket is now on so that is the basic turning on turning off and how it controls the auxiliary socket right so we've got that we've got door open we've done the isolated we've done the basic on off fuse so if you get into a pickle there is a fuse box here and you can remove this here it's nice the way it, it's symmetrical, isn't it? The design of the fuse box cover is mirrored in the compressor cover. We like that. Right, and then here, Tyler, have you got a bit of torchdom? And then we can just push that there and push the little one at the top, bottom, sorry. Oh, come on. It's tricky to get on that bottom one, isn't it, Tyler? So there's the fuse box. Now, if you are going in the fuse box, there is no things here, but there is there is a little label sheet here at the side. Actually, did we have a look what that fuse said on here, Tyler? No. We haven't, have we? We haven't messed it out. <laughs> we haven't, it's true enough. How do you actually get it out? How do you, oh, there you go. Oh, it's sort of got some, right. Now it is this fuse that Tyler has covered orange here. And before it was orange in its previous life, it was yellow and it was a 20 amp fuse, if I'm not mistaken. That right, Tyler? Yeah. That one's a bit bright on there and I need to cover that over. Right then, just pull that out while we're looking. Good idea, Tyler. Easy, easy. easy, easy. All right, let's kill that off. Tyler's got his light. Now take that out, so you do it. Right then. Right, so let's have a look. So fuse number, oh. Oh my God. Oh my God, yeah. Number 20. Fuse 24, fuse 21, fuse 20. It seems to say it's the door locks um, or something, but there you go. But that is what controls the auxiliary fuse, fuse 20, are you sure that's fuse 20 here, Tyler? Yeah. Right then, so it is that one there. Now, um, we do have one contributor who has said, contributor as in terms of contributing comments, not money, I should add. Um, and he said, Simon, I've got one of these and it keeps blowing fuses. I mentioned it before, didn't I, Tyler? Yeah. And so ours doesn't blow a fuse. So what I'm going to do, especially for you, is we have got a current meter. Uh, let's have a look. We have got one of these Sealy current meters. And basically, it's got a series of little different fuse adapters. Oh, yeah, that's that. And basically, you can put it in. Now, it's got a fuse here to stop. 
because obviously you don't just want to put a current meter across it because it might melt all your wiring if it took 50 amps it would take 50 amps through all your wiring so this still has a fuse but what it does is it measures the current going through this meter and gives us a display on here but the problem is when we tried to fit it in you've got your little torch on you tyler when we tried to fit it in here we we couldn't fit it in there because of this relay so i ingeniously came up with put these piggyback and i've managed to put two of those on so what we're going to do is we're going to put that into there and then we are going to plug that in so i will get that plugged into there because tyler's going to have to do that because he's got eyes right and we'll put that in and we'll have a look how much current this takes so right to get this working we are going to have to use the we have to get the compressor working so whenever you're connecting this obviously this is the schrader valve wheel tire end this is the compressor end and i actually haven't plugged this in tyler i've used it also it's got a little sort of little bit you've got to pull back okay but that should just clip on if i'm not mistaken or, or do we have to pull the release back to get it on it looks like you have to pull yeah so i have to pull it back slightly to get it on we are gonna then attach this to a tire down here we've got the valves off already careful you don't cross thread it there we go now there isn't a one-way valve in here so as soon as you connect it now if you connect this end first all you do is get loads of air coming out of here and then you you can't get it on because it's fighting against the air right so we should be ready to go we've got power on the usb thing here so we should be ready to go right we should better set the dial so let's let's set it to 37.5 press again then it'll do its little power sequence doop, 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 doop. and there it goes right and th this is what we're waiting for so you can see it when it's going it's about 14 four, i think 14.2 was the biggest we had wasn't it tyler so if you're if you're pulling more than that i would suggest should i kill it stopped it um so yeah if you're getting more than 14.2 ish amps i would suggest there's probably something wrong with your compressor um it's not related to the auxiliary socket because because that gets disabled which is clever because you don't want to be if it was pulling power out of both of them 20 amp fuse that's pulling 14 it's getting up to up to the 20 amps isn't it right that is the end of this video have i done everything tyler we are oh, no we've done the fuse we've done the current tyler tyler asked me and said simon why do we need a compressor here when we've got a compressor here and he's not wrong and it's a good question so underneath this mat here underneath this floor in this corner we have the air suspension compressor which compresses air which is what this does now so land rover could with a bit of thought design that compressor to also work this so they could not need that but you would still need a box of electronic trickery because this is really cool the way you'll still need a dial to set your to set your um tire pressure you need ideally so that is this is really good because what we can do is we can set this you can walk around your car and without coming back here you can set every tire now you may have to come back to re-initialize it but at least you can set every tire you don't and it's really accurate and really good and you can deflate and inflate so it was a good question tyler and Land Rover could do it. I'm sure it's possible, but they haven't. So you have to buy one of these. And the other thing is apparently, I haven't watched the video yet, but apparently Casey Neistat, I don't know if I've said that right. Um, he has done a video. He's got a Defender, which is really cool. He used to have an old Hilux pickup. Um, he's probably still got it if he's like me. And he put a water tank on the roof and he must have had it half full with water. And then he, he used the compressor to pressurize the air so that the air because air will compress and then he managed to generate a sort of pressure shower apparently there we go there is the compressor we will put these for sale on our website but they're available from dealers the only thing we will add is we will add that template to make the fit in easier so wherever you buy it from enjoy this video good luck with that see you later